thank you Vikas for finally making it because Vikas was stuck in traffic for quite some time and we've been waiting for him for uh, last uh, almost 30, 35 minutes. I, uh, I apologize for the same. Uh, I'll you know. make it up from here. Can I sure. Uh, so, you know, Vikas, uh, when I was told that I have to do this session with you, I went through a lot of videos where you've been talking and it's really been a very, very inspiring journey. I was personally very inspired how you uh, believed in the idea that you had and f what you have built for yourself and for the country. So, uh, you know, we want to start with your journey, you know, how did the idea of Happylo uh, come to you and uh, when you started, did you think that you, you'll, you'll build a 500 crore company? Uh, thank you so much, Nazia, for having me here and uh, <coughs> apologize for the delay to start. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, uh, the Happylo was born in 2016, uh, in uh, September, October. So, we are near seventh year of the journey now. So, I think when we started, yeah, we, we always did, you know, took small steps, never thought uh, what will, uh, what we wanted to become in terms of revenue or in terms of brand and valuation. And all. We always wanted to do the small things right. I think we always knew that we'll make it big, uh, but time is the only, you know, matter. So, I think uh, we are confident in that space. In terms of why uh, uh, the dry fruit and snacking space, basically, I was a retailer before that. Uh, so, I, I founded a retail chain which I expanded to around 15 stores. So, during that time, the availability was a problem in terms of, you know, uh, branded dry fruits and snacks and healthier alternatives to people, right? A lot of dependency was there on international brands uh, from across Southeast Asia or US and availability was a problem. So, I thought, you know, uh, uh, why can't uh, Indians create global brands of recognition? And that was the inspiration, you know, I wanted to take India to the globe and that's what Happy was born. You, uh, in one of your interviews, you said your father was a farmer, you know, he was from a farming background. What, what was he into? Like, what kind of uh, farming was he doing? Yeah, see, I come from a, uh, you know, remote place called as Sakleshpur. It is around 200 kilometers south of Bangalore. Uh, it's largely a very scenic place. People go there for homestays and all. It's quite scenic out there. Uh, and uh, my father was actually, you know, uh, doing a lot of farming practices there. He used to uh, grow a lot of coffee and pepper, uh, largely. So, uh, my childhood was all, always going on the weekends to the farms uh, and the estate is what they call. And then look at how the cultivation is done, how the harvesting is done. Uh, so, uh, father was largely into farming practices of uh, uh, spices, largely cardamom, pepper and coffee. But not, nothing to do with the dry fruits? Uh, no, I think dry fruit was uh, not relevant back then, but uh, the idea of trading, the idea of uh, farming, harvesting and all those things actually uh, played a key role in me understanding the nuances quite early in terms of agricultural practices. And also father also used to, you know, uh, opposed farming, used to also aggregate, uh, you know, a lot of stuff from uh, nearby farms and also and then sell it to the processing center. So, I saw business happening very closely in my younger childhood. I think that shaped up a lot of uh, my uh, instinct to do uh, business and learn a lot from my father. Uh, you have started a digital first company and uh, it has become a huge success. So, you know, for the beginners, what, what would you describe as the biggest challenges that you faced in your journey in the initial years? Uh, see, initially, uh, uh, if you see large brands always have stronger distribution in terms of offline. Uh, for example, Hindustan Unilever must be available in more than uh, a crore outlets, right? Now, that is the uh, GT potential what we have, the offline, there are one crore outlets in India. And even Hindustan Liver, Unilever might be present in say 70-80% of that. Uh, for any young brand to build distribution, uh, even to for say one lakh stores is very, very difficult because it's very expensive, we have to hire a lot of people. But for younger brands, it's easier to launch something online uh, because they, they have to just convince the category manager uh, to launch the product and uh, you are visible to, uh, you know, uh, millions of Indians online. So, for any brand, I think e-commerce first approach is always better because they don't have to f uh, focus on uh, distribution and this acts like a pilot for your uh, offline strategy as well. I think that's how we started and initially we, when we launched first time, it, we launched it on Big Basket, then moved on to Amazon and other platforms. And that's where we, you know, got decent success in terms of the customer traction. We did a lot of experiment in terms of how do we launch a product. If something was not working, we are quick to uh, change the product and things like that. So that's how it started and e-commerce give you a platform where you can actually do trial and error. 
and once you have a little bit of traction when the uh, you know uh, product market fit is done you can actually go you know expanding in the omni, omni channel strategy where you can go offline you can go to modern trades you can open your own stores which we actually done all of them uh, in fact uh, uh, not only e-commerce we are largely now present across uh, 15000 stores in india so that's why we able to expand but initial traction happened on e-commerce and i think uh, we were a large beneficiary uh, during the covid as well because everybody was at home and uh, you know nobody was able to go out everybody was depending on e-commerce and uh, we were actually at that time trying to be one of the largest brands out there and uh, eventually it happened that we became that number one brand uh, in the category and we created the category with e-commerce plays uh, you've given a wholesome thing but you know if i'm very interested in understanding what were few initial months like you know how many customers did you have initially how did you grow it how if you can share more details uh, see i actually you know started with very meager amount you know initially it was very tough i read 10000 somewhere yeah yeah actually you know it's it will be very hard to believe for people that i only started the company with only 10000 rupees how did you break spend that 10000 rupees uh, see 10000 was what i had you know and uh, i actually wanted to you know do something big and you know start happy lo so what i did uh, you know initially we just put the plan in paper uh, in fact uh, and i requested my wife actually to support me uh, for the initial funding right what does so, your wife do uh she was working for indian oil back then uh, uh she was an hr manager in indian oil in fact we did our mba together and she was in uh, okay. hr and i was in marketing that's how we met okay. uh, we were in pune smhrd for the first time okay. and uh, then uh, we fell in love and got married as well we have two lovely daughters now so i think uh, a lot of success also is instrumental to her in supporting me in my early days when uh, it was very tough for me to manage the finances i think she was handling the entire household chores you know she was paying all the rentals and paying for the grocery bills where i was trying to focus on my dream and trying to build something large so i think it doesn't happen without if you don't have a support system in place and uh, i started with 10000 but i was fortunate enough that uh, wife actually gave up her entire life savings of 20 lakhs uh, to me uh, you know to proceed with the venture and that's how it started uh, then i was also a beneficiary of a government program called as cgt msc uh, where small scale enterprises you know can apply uh, through the uh, startup india uh, website and get up to uh, 1 crore of uh, capital without any collateral back then now the limit has been extended under the new government for 2 crores so i was a beneficiary of that i got 75 lakhs of you know collateral free loan okay. uh, that was a stepping stone and it uh, helped us not to you know dilute equity at a very early stage in how much time after you fr- uh, took the leap of you know starting the thing uh when you realize that what you have done is right you are in the you know you are going in the right direction and you arrived uh no thing i i personally feel we are still work in progress i think uh you know uh, it's it's always a learning curve for us uh, we learn every day uh, oh, but every i remember you take. said that you had 20 rejections yeah so largely that was uh, related to fundraising right we started the company in uh, to late 2016 for the same idea for happy loan only yeah yeah for happy loan only i have met uh, many investors i should take a early morning flight meet two three investors here in mumbai and go back again to bangalore not to spend more money on staying back here and things like that so uh, i always had this uh, approach of you know trying to meet investors trying to pitch the idea to them but initially there were not many takers because they felt ki bhai aaj tak jo hua nahi matlab aap kaise karenge uh you know in india i don't think uh, you know a dry fruit healthy snack brand can actually exist so there were a lot of challenges initially because when you try to build a category from scratch uh, uh creating category is very tough it's expensive and it's also tough to get accreditation from a lot of people so i think that that was a phase where uh, from 2017 to 2020 uh, i had met uh, almost 20 investors and everyone turned me down and said this will not work uh and that is the you know beauty of it and it definitely works are you in worked. touch with any of those investors now yeah yeah they are all in touch with me and uh, actually we are great friends now in fact uh, we are, uh, happen to meet a lot in events and also they always say that uh, thanks to for proving me wrong so that mm-hmm. that is what they have so uh how is building a digital brand different from building a non digital brand So I think in today's world uh, uh, the line is very thin uh, for any brand to be of scale uh, they have to have both the strategies of being online and offline uh, any brand cannot only uh, say that I'll only be digital first I'll not go offline but it depends on how where you start you can always start as a digital first brand and go to, go to offline later and vice versa but as i told earlier it's very expensive to start from the offline piece of it because india is such a large country uh, with such a massive population and uh, the tastes and preferences changing every 10 kilometers it's very difficult for you to actually you know uh, able to crack the distribution strategy in the early period 
Uh, but it's always easy to, you can go to a big basket purchase manager or a category manager, vice versa, an Amazon or Flipkart. You're actually able to convince them over the table if the product has that good, uh, you know, uh, uh, clarity in terms of brand positioning, uh, product taste and price points. If you're able to convince them, you're immediately live and millions of customers can actually see you. But when you want to start the, you know, offline channel first, uh, there's a lot of manpower required, right? Malab, uh, one single manpower can cover, say, uh, 20 to 30 stores per day and even maximum 40 stores per day. But uh, 40 stores is not good enough in terms of volume and revenue. So you have, you have to build, maybe employ 100 of people and maybe pay, pay 4 or 5 lakh salary per month to start off. Uh, in initial phase, that is not going to be easy. Uh, so today we have more than 700 people in the company. But when we started, we were only 2-3. So that's how the journey has been. So it's always good. I personally believe that brands should try it out on their, on their website as a D2C brand, then expand to marketplaces, uh, you know, work towards the product market fit. Once they find traction and they believe that the product is good enough and there's a fitment in the market, uh, and the uh, target audience is large enough. That's the act when they can accelerate and try to look for fundraising, try to build a like-minded team, uh, invest in technology and uh, look forward for distribution. Also invest in marketing. When was the time that you started investing in marketing? Uh, see, we, uh, whatever uh, money we made in the initial time, we actually always reinvested in the brand itself. Uh, in the first four years, I personally myself never uh, drew any salary also. Because I felt that uh, in the early stage, uh, I would rather invest whatever uh, earnings we have. We actually reinvest in the brand, try to grow the brand in terms of uh, visibility, you know, brand positioning and create that brand, uh, you know, number one brand in the category. So that was always the aspiration. But the major uh, shift in marketing came when we actually raised our first fund in Feb 2021. Uh, so during the COVID times, we didn't even meet the investors. Everything happened online. And we were able to raise our first fundraise of 100 crores. Uh, so for a FMCG brand uh, who has not raised funding ever, uh, to raise 100 crores was a, actually a milestone in itself. People actually start off with raising 2 crores, 10 crores and like that. So initially our first fundraise was 100 crores. So when we got 100 crores first 3-4 uh, uh, months, I not, did not know how to spend 100 crores. So that was, that was how it was. Then we started doing strategies, you know, looking at things and what do Indians consume. Did you hire an agency or you made Yeah, we hired, we hired a couple of agencies as well, but uh, largely uh, I am very pro on, you know, in terms of uh, marketing and creating content. That has, that's how I've been my background as well. So actually we happen to see in India only two things sell, you know, uh, uh, either cricket uh, or Bollywood, right? So we invested in both of them. We became the titles, title partners for Rajasthan Royals. Uh, uh, then we actually extended our partnership with RCB. Why, why did you choose Rajasthan Royals? Was it your preferred market or it was a cheaper option? Uh, no, it was not cheaper, neither a preferred market. It was basically the only jersey available with the uh, title partner option available. Okay. That was the only option available. Because all the brand, other teams were taken, right? So that was the only available. And we are getting like, massive uh, size logo visibility on the jersey. And that actually changed the, the way Apple was looked at. The, that app was actually my next question. How yeah. did you benefit from IPL's I think uh, the perception of uh, the brand completely you know, uh, increased. And we became the face of the category today, right? Today, uh, uh, very difficult for people to remember any other brand in the category other than Apple. So we were able to create that impact. And then we also onboarded a couple of celebrities, like we had Siddharth and Kiara onboarded before they got married. Uh, when, they, when they were actually dating each other, we actually got them, roped in them, both of them separately. And things turned out, we actually manifested well, I think, so they got married as well. Good. You made uh, a happy couple. So, uh, after you invested in IPL, uh, do you feel that it, it met your expectations or did it exceed the expectations? No, I think uh, definitely expectation was exceeded, right? It was a big uh, ATL uh, you know, impact in terms of brand visibility, brand awareness, uh, top of mind, uh, top of the mind recall and all those things. Uh, but you can, uh, can never uh, count, uh, you know, your ATL spends like IPL to, and you cannot relate it to uh, the revenue growth and something. But overall things, you'll overall get a good hike, but you will not see an immediate impact in terms of revenue. But uh, the brand awareness uh, and, you know, uh, the people searching for your brand actually increases a lot. So you're always there in terms of top of the mind recall and whenever they actually need a product, they, then you'll always choose happy at the first instance. Our visibility across retail chains, modern trade, general trade, e-commerce had a great impact in terms of search and clicks. So uh, now with IPL, Happylo had kind of arrived and everyone recognized the brand. After that happened Shark Tank and then people started recognizing you as well, right? So you invested in yourself also in a way to become the face of your brand. Uh, tell us about, you know, what was the reasoning behind doing Shark Tank? How did the journey start? 
No, I think, see, to be honest, Shark Tank was never thought of. It was just, you know, he just came in uh, as a surprise where, Achha, you know… You were was, approached? Yeah, so, he was, you know, uh, they just wanted a guest shark for a single episode as well. Uh, because, you know, the, they were aware of the brand and they wanted to see if that can work. So, the producing team actually came down, flew down and just wanted to have a quick conversation. Uh, we had a good half an hour chat and that's where they decided okay, that you have to be our next guest shark and they just wanted to check if, you know, uh, the things could work and, you know, end of the day, the brands want good TRPs out there and people want to give out good content, I think. I think uh, we kind of had a synergy where uh, they said they uh, offered that, you know, guest shark for a single episode. So, uh, I was not keen initially, I just almost took 10 days to sign up for it because I was not sure if… Why, why were you not keen on an opportunity uh, like that? Uh, maybe… Uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of uh, being little nervous and trying to be on TV, I think, uh, uh, unlike the celebs and cricketers, I think uh, we are not exposed, you know, enough to be that face of the brand on to carry it on national television was a little bit, uh, you know, butterflies flying everywhere. So, I had to ask, you know, 10, 20 of my friends, my investors, my family and all that, you know, we, will it be the right thing for me to be on uh, national television and, you know, uh, we had mixed what responses. What was the reaction of your family, your wife, your father? It was a lot of mixed reactions, I think. Uh, uh, Basically, uh, family was like not into it completely because, uh, uh, but uh, wife was hesitant enough initial days but then she says, yes, we should do it and father was always saying yes. Why would they be hesitant? I mean, I, I see it as a very big opportunity where you can go and, you know, make your brand even more popular. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, in hindsight, it's, it's that's like what… It's free marketing. <laughs> yeah, it's completely agreed. But what happens is initially, uh, you know, be on national television is a different challenge all itself. Uh, you know, uh, you have to be uh, communicatable in terms of how do you build the brand story out there, right? So, uh, initially and also family requires more privacy in terms of being there, uh, you know, the privacy gets hampered. So, that's the only thing. Otherwise, you know, I was always confident enough to be there and deliver. But I think in the initial phases, uh, we had a lot of discussions around it. I took around 7-10 days to convince myself to be on the stage. And finally, when you said yes and when you did, the, did that episode, how did… did life change? Did things change? Uh, did people start recognizing you, coming to you and saying that, you know, you, you're the shark we saw on television? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, life changed a lot after that. I think the recognition uh, and the love what I got uh, uh, from the Shark Tank audience or from family and friends and from the vendors, suppliers who all knew me, I think it was overwhelming for me and it was a great uh, opportunity to represent uh, uh, you know, uh, as a shark at Shark Tank and I always ended up investing in two brands as well out there. And I was the lone shark who was coming from an FMCG food background as well. So, that also added a lot of uh, new dimension to the show itself. How much did it help your brand to be on the Shark Tank? See, personally being on Shark Tank, uh, there is not much impact in terms of again uh, uh, revenue per se, but the brand awareness grows and largely uh, the person behind the brand gets more prominence than actually the brand. You know, people are willing to look at uh, who is the person who built Happy Low, what is he, where is he from. So, you know, uh, uh, Google was all flooded with, you know, who is Vikas Ji Nahar, who is the founder of Apple, how he found it. I think people wanted to be more don't, curious. Don't you think it brings more credibility to the brand, you know, when you know the owner, when you have an idea about his life? See, the trust factor goes up. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, people are uh, willing to, uh, you know, look at who the founder is and how he has come up, what he has done so far. I think that, you know, trust factor goes up uh, and uh, people actually start accepting and appreciating what has been created and, and every Indian out there, you know, India is such a big potential country, right? I think this decade actually is one of the massive decades for India. We have already crossed 4 trillion in terms of economy as well and I think India will definitely become that superpower. So, everybody in India has that uh, fire that, you know, India may con sabse brand bada, bada banayega. How will people take India to the globe, right? That aspiration is there and people want to support. You know, in today's world, uh, you know, earlier, aaj se das bhi saal pehle, if somebody wanted to do a startup, ghar wale bolte te, bhai, uh, you should not do it. It's a lot of risk. You are leaving your well-paid job and, you know, trying to do a startup. But today's world, it's very different, right? And people actually uh, motivate uh, their own family members, kids to actually take up entrepreneurship. That's the massive change has come in India. And today people want to see who is doing what and want to support each other and the community has come together actually and that has also helped us to build uh, the brand to that next level. And uh, you have also uh, become an angel investor, you know, you are also helping uh, people uh, who have ideas and aspirations. So, you know, when you, uh, when you have people coming to you with their ideas, youngsters, how do you judge it? I mean, uh, is it based on the person, on the idea, like how do you evaluate? 
see i look at uh, two to three things largely you know uh, first the the passion what the founder has uh, has it got in him to actually last long because running a, a startup is not easy uh, there will be lots and up and so, uh, ups and downs you know uh, and it's not going to be easy it's not like you know it's a sprint that you run quickly and reach the target and it's done it's like you have to do the same thing again and again you have to do the right things even when nobody is watching you so it's a long marathon uh, you know you have to keep keep on it if the, if the founder is persistent enough uh, passionate enough i think that ticks the first box for me and the second box would be uh, how big the market is you might have the greatest of product but if the market doesn't exist then the product will not actually succeed i think two most important factors for me is how who is the founder uh, how persistent passionate he is and second thing is is the product fit enough for the market and is the market large enough uh vikas i also was listening to one of your interviews where you said uh, a very key part of growth is you know building a good team and uh, you started with three or four people and now today you have 600 700 people working for you so uh, would you define for us what is a good team you know how do you build a good team what are the qualities that you look for uh, in all the people that you hire i think see initially uh, as any startup we also had a tough time actually to identify good talent and groom them and grow together uh initially uh, the zero to one was all done single handedly by me so i in fact uh, it was easy for me to do everything because i handled multiple departments and things like that but uh, one to 10 journey or also was able to do myself with a for team size built up maybe to 50 60 people or 80 people like that and still i was able to identify all the people uh, in the company by name and where they come from what thing to do but as soon as we exceeded that uh, 1 to 10 journey then after that it was very difficult for me to actually look at all things uh, myself right the 10 to 100 journey could only happen because we built a good team so around the first 10 people that you hired what were the qualities that you looked for see that time it was very simple right i was looking for people uh, who would ask less salaries and <laughs> <laughs> so Uh, because okay. i didn't have much money to pay but actually it was like you know i wanted uh, you know uh, to people who had good values and were passionate about you know doing something large right so initially uh, they actually lived the vision with me you know uh, they also felt that something large can happen they trusted uh, me at that time because to be honest we were not the best players uh, back are, then are they still with you yeah absolutely 70% of the people of the first 10 people are still with me and they are come already committed 5 years that's great uh i also want to talk about happylo as a product you know uh dry fruits have always been there snacks have always been there in indian market how how did you position it differently and uh, if you had to dis- if you had to pitch the product to me today how what are some of the unique qualities of what you are offering see it's all about uh, giving uh, quality deliverables uh, consistency and i feel for any food brand uh, any food product any fmcg brand for that matter brand is the biggest differentiator right so for example if you have a noodles pack right you uh, remove the uh, logo of uh, you know nestle maggi out there and uh, put some xyz the product will not sell so it's you know the first most important thing is the brand which will give you the first sale so how how can you create the brand positioning in the customer's mind and how can the packaging that's your first marketing material how can that be attractive so i did a lot of homework on how the packaging should, should look like right how the brand should be communicated what should be the brand name i think you know if you know uh, that happylo uh, is a made up name it's not a dictionary name right yeah, so that's how I, you get... i would also want to ask you how did this name come so up? basically i wanted some gen z name uh, you know uh, i cannot uh, today uh, name my brand uh, haldiram or uh, no or nathus like that you no know, today's people will not accept it it is been there from generation so it's okay right uh, a mangaram wafers can sell because it's there from 40 50 years today if i name the brand mangaram people will say what are you naming it so you know we have to come uh, you know work along with who the audience is i right? do want to do something gen z and which can be expandable to newer skews also so happylo simply means happiness plus love okay so that's how the word happylo happylo was born so it's basically happiness plus it love it was your idea it was discussed internally in the family yeah it was actually you uh, know uh, my idea had branched on more than 100 names right so Uh, what were some of the other names uh, i think there was happy life and there was some others which i actually don't remember right now uh, but then uh, after all these things i zeroed in on happylo because i thought this is more memorable uh, if somebody hears the word happylo the brand happylo i think it sticks on to you uh, it's very easy for you to you know uh, then rebuild on that in terms of marketing and trying to create more awareness and create that stickiness to the brand name 
So I think I personally believe for any FSG brand, somebody who wants listening here wants to build a brand, I think the brand name is the most important part. Second thing would be the packaging because that will what will give you the first sale. And then if the product is good, uh, if there's consistency, then that will give you a repeat sale. So all these things, you know, work in that order itself. What are your plans uh, for Happylo's international expansion? Which all, uh, have you already gone abroad or you're in process of going? Which all countries, which all markets are you planning to target? Yeah, we want to be actually uh, India's global brand. We have trademarked Happylo across uh, more than 100 countries now. So we have global aspirations. Uh, we just started uh, looking at international market. Uh, we have launched uh, Happylo in Qatar and Dubai right now. Uh, so we are looking forward to those uh, responses, how we see. We have launched in more than 50 supermarkets there. So this will be our second month of operation. So we want to see how it goes from there. Uh, then if uh, we have uh, understanding of the market, then we'll go deeper out there and maybe set up a marketing office there and uh, try to see how we can actually grow it out there. Uh, initially, we have started with two countries and within the next two, three months, we'll be also available in three more countries out there. So we'll do a pilot with five countries and take it from you there. want to share which other three countries are you planning? Uh, basically, uh, uh, after Qatar, then we have UAE. Uh, and after UAE, we have uh, Thailand, Singapore and Maldives. Basically, countries with heavy NRI population. Yeah, countries with uh, more tourist influx, uh, you know, uh, where the population is more Cosmo and, you know, there is a lot of travelers coming around. So, for them, we want to provide that convenient snack option based on dry fruits, uh, health being the primary call out. What is your, what are your thoughts on the overall Indian market, uh, Indian snacks market? You know, how has it shaped in last 10 years and how big is the scope going forward? I think uh, today entire world is actually looking at India, right? So yesterday uh, I was in an uh, investor summit uh, for my existing investor. Uh, uh, so uh, we see so many interest uh, from across the globe who wants to invest in India, right? Uh, there were 40 odd people coming from different parts of the country, different parts of the world. So they actually wanted to invest in India because uh, today uh, we are 140 crore plus in terms of size. Uh, the aspirations are growing, uh, the household incomes are growing, uh, the disposable incomes are growing. You know, people actually are looking forward to India because there is not a single market which is as big as India, right? So uh, even for that matter, uh, the big growth, whatever the brands are getting from across the group, actually looking at India. Uh, for example, if you, if I'll tell you a fact that India is the second largest importer of dry fruits, that itself is a big validation. Across the globe, India is the second largest importer of dry fruits. So that's how the big the market is. That's how people focus so much on India. Even for brands like Nestle's, uh, Hindustan Levers and everybody. Everybody is actually looking at India because they don't see any consumption in across the world. We see entire, you see uh, wars happening in couple of countries. There are a lot of disturbance in terms of, you know, economic stability and all those things. But India as a country is growing year on year uh, at a good rate. And uh, GDP is growing, income is growing and a lot of stability is there in terms of political stability, in terms of the climate suiting, agriculture is doing good. Overall, it's a best place to be and I firmly believe that uh, this decade, this century actually will belong to India. Maybe in the next 10-15 years, you will see that uh, India is among the top one or two countries in the world who is going to dictate terms to the world. Uh, Vikas, uh, your, this idea has worked wonders for you and uh, you're already on the right track. We hope that you will soon make it a thousand crore and then, the, I mean, I don't know how many zeros will you keep adding to it. Uh, do you have more ideas that you would want to eventually, like in future, get into? Any other market that you see is has potential where you would like see, to invest? See, we always try to create newer products, you know. Uh, for us, uh, uh, we believe that, you know, uh, R&D has to be very important uh, for any FMCG brand. We have created a massive R&D facility in Bangalore. Other than the production plant, what we created around 1 lakh square feet. So we have just launched a dry fruit bar which is made completely of dry fruits without any sugar. The sweetness comes from dates. So similarly, we have launched uh, dry fruit based confectionaries where how can you ensure that kids eat more dry fruits but in a way of confectionery? How can they go away from a regular sugar, sugary stuff what they eat? <coughs> so we always believe that, you know, we will try to create newer ideas how we can ensure that the convenience is there, people can uh, have a single serve. In fact, we have launched dry fruits at, you know, affordable price point at 20 and 30 rupees as well which is now widely available in the market also. So we want people to actually avoid eating any fried chips for that matter or going to some sugary stuff. Uh, we want to replace that habit where people actually consume uh, nuts on the go, uh, which is very you know, relevant in the West. Uh, people actually carry nuts in their cars and everything because they don't want to eat something junk. 
So, and we are even one tenth of the consumption in terms of US. Right? Every if a person in US eats one kg per month, we don't even eat 100 grams. So, that's the disparity. So, is it because of the cost or awareness? Uh, it's both, uh, you know, uh, but cost today is not a problem. I think today uh, the disposable incomes have increased and people are well aware and with a lot of exposure to, you know, international market, uh, well-traveled people, the awareness is slowly building. Uh, maybe 10 years before, uh, dry food was not part of your grocery list. It was only uh, consumed when somebody would gift, it, gift it to you. But today it's part of every monthly buying list. So that's the change what has happened. People actually want to consume healthy now. And after COVID, I think there's a lot of reinforcement uh, in terms of eating healthy, uh, protein-based food, high fiber and things like that. You'll surely be very popular amongst mothers. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, that's really a very big challenge and I, I speak from experience. I think happy to exist because of the wonderful mothers out there. Uh, Vikas, your story has really been very, very inspiring and there's a lot that we would want to talk about but we are uh, running out of time and people must be very hungry because <laughs> we have lunch uh, immediately after this. Uh, thanks for coming all the way and talking to us and inspiring us, Vikas. It is a great thanks. pleasure. Great pleasure. Yeah. All right.